In this video, we're going to cover some of the new updates that have come out as part of Power BI's monthly update, the July 2023, including things like the new line type that they've added for the line charts, some bug fixes that they've made for the on-object interaction, as well as the ability to access your data models from the mobile app for Power BI. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Ferran and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So let's start with this uh, new updates that lets you choose smoother lines for your line charts in Power BI. So this gives your reports a bit more of a polished look, and you can get this option under the format, then lines, then under shape, you'll have this option to choose smooth. Along with this, you can also choose a stepped view, which already existed before, and which gives you a different way to visualize your line charts. Another update that they've made with the line charts is by adding these leader lines. Leader lines are basically these lines that leads your data labels to the actual line chart itself, which makes it easier to distinguish which parts of the chart labels are for. You can find this option under data labels, then under options and leader lines. There are new updates that were made on the on object interaction this month. So now on the right hand side, next to the panes, you will now notice a plus button that lets you add panes quickly and easily. When you click on it, it will give you a brief description of what panes are available and what they do. And these changes are saved cross reports. So basically it means that you only need to configure them once. Along with that, you will see a cog icon on the bottom right hand of the screen that will let you access other preference settings with how you work with on object interaction. So this cog icon will let you toggle this option to reattach the build menu as a pane here on the right hand side. In addition to all of these changes, you can now also use control click to open multiple panes quickly within the pane switcher. You can now select subcategories within the tree maps visual, which I guess you couldn't do before using on object interaction. Along with this month's update, they've also pushed out some bug fixes to the on object interaction. Here's the full lists of the one bug that I'm happy that is fixed is this overlap of on object formats on top of the formula bar. So this one got really annoying because it covers the formula bar accidentally and there's no way for you to not have it overlapping the formula bar. So I'm happy that this one is fixed now. So I'm sure I'll see these changes when I update my version. On object interaction is a new feature that was released this year that lets you easily format parts of your visual by clicking on visual elements of your charts. If you want to learn more about it and how you can start using it, I did cover it in a previous video. So go check that one out if you haven't yet. Relationship validation is now available when you edit data models within the Power BI service. So like in Power BI Desktop, when you load your data into the model and set relationships, the Power BI service, like Power BI Desktop, can now automatically validate the columns that you have and suggest choices like the cardinality that you might want and the cross-filtering selections available. Editing your data models within the Power BI service is also a relatively new feature that completely deprecates the need to use Power BI Desktop. It does have its own limitations at its current state at the moment, so if you want to learn more about this feature, I did cover it in a previous video. Lastly, there's been a revamp with the dataset details page within the Power BI service. It now includes a bunch of new features which makes working and exploring datasets a lot easier. First is the actions. Here you can see the different options like creating reports or refreshing your dataset. You can even see the refresh history under the refresh menu. You can see the metadata of the datasets, so things like refresh dates and description. You can also see any related items to this dataset, either upstream or downstream. So you can see any reports that get its data from this dataset, like ports, scorecards, or even dashboards. This has also been updated to easily showcase any dependencies that your datasets might have. Another view 
view that is really interesting is this new data set schema view on the right hand side. So it will let you see a preview of all of your tables, columns and rows, which will also let you export your data as paginated reports. And that's really it for this update video. It's pretty short because the updates for this month were pretty small. However, if you want to learn more about anything else that they've updated, including some of the new custom visuals that you can use, I'll leave a link to the blog post in the description box below. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access demo files and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.